Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fishing with James. This is episode 2 of my hand tied jig series, and today I'll be showing you how to tie a jig that I call Frosty Grape. And at the end of the video, I'll be throwing it in my fish tank to give you all some underwater footage. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started, and as always, everything you'll need to tie this jig can be found in the description of this video. The jig head I'll be using for this jig is a half and half Junebug in white Protec painted jig head. And I've also gone ahead and stuck some 1 16th inch eyes on the side of it. I'll be making an in-depth video very soon on how I paint these jig heads, so make sure to subscribe if you aren't already so you don't miss that. So first, we're going to go ahead and take our super glue and make a thin line all the way down to the point of the hook and wipe up any extra glue that's left over. Next, I'm going to take my thread and start wrapping it around the hook. I'm going to go all the way down to the point of the hook, that's going to be my mark, and then I'm going to go all the way back up to the head of the jig and set my thread off to the side. Also, don't forget to snip your tag end of your thread. Next, I've taken a piece of white marabou feather. I've actually wet my fingers and slid the feather through there, and it's made it easier to sit down on the jig. This is one of the first times I've actually tried this, but it's worked really well for me, and so I think I'm going to continue doing it in the future. Now I'm going to make a super loose loop and cinch the feather down onto the jig. I'm going to hold it and make sure it stays flat and flush to the jig like I like it, and tie it off about two-thirds of the way down to the point of the hook. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with a piece of purple marabou feather. I'm going to lay it here on the side of the jig. The goal is to get a side and side approach with the feathers. Get one curl on one side, one color on the other. I'm going to lay it right there on the side. Again, a very loose loop of thread right there to make sure it doesn't yank it out of the way. And then we're going to tie it down again to the same point as the other feather about two thirds of the way to the hook. Once I get that, I'm going to go ahead and go all the way back up to the head of the jig. Now I'm going to take a piece of silver tinsel cut in half and lay it right up against the head of the jig. Then I'm going to take the thread and lay it down onto the jig, holding it with the feathers to make sure it stays where I want it to, right on the bottom, and tie it down to the same point as I did the feathers. I'm going to take the thread and go back up to the head of the jig again. This is also a good time to go ahead and trim out the tinsel. Next, we're going to be building the body of the jig, and we're going to start by making the belly, which is just a piece of white chenille. And this is very crucial to make sure that this white chenille stays on the very bottom of the jig as perfectly centered as you can possibly get it. We're going to tie it to the same spot we did the feathers and go back up to the head of the jig with the thread. And now we're going to take this chenille and get all the extra feathers and loose bits off of it and hold it on the very bottom of the jig as if we were making it and trim it just a little bit past the head. We're just giving ourselves a little bit of wiggle room with the length of this chenille. And this is gonna be our piece of chenille for the belly, and we'll be working with that later. Now it's time to build the main part of the body, which is purple. We're gonna take our purple chenille right here and wrap it down again to the same exact point that we've wrapped everything else and make sure to go all the way back up to the head of the jig. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to use the rotary function of my vise to slowly start spinning the chenille back up towards the head of the jig. I'm actually doing a few layers on this jig since this chenille is a little bit thinner, and I'm going to go all the way back up to the head of the jig, and once I have it to the desired thickness, I'm going to take my thread and cinch it down to the body of the jig by going underneath it just like that. Now I'm going to do a loop by the head, followed by another loop up underneath the chenille, another loop by the head, one more loop underneath the chenille, and then a few more loops of thread by the head of the jig. Next up, we're going to cut the tag end of the purple chenille. Make sure to be very careful when you're cutting the chenille so you don't damage the underside of the jig. And now we're going to take the piece of white chenille from earlier, again getting all the loose feathers and bits off of it, and we're going to hold it up to the head of the jig on the very bottom. Now we're going to do this very tightly and make sure again that it's in the very middle of the jig. Now we're going to take the thread and start looking at it to get it as centered as we possibly can. Once I have it about where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it one more time to make sure it's as centered as I can get it. You can adjust it after you make the loop with the thread, but it's better to get it centered beforehand. We're going to take a very loose loop of thread and then we're going to cinch it down to the bottom of the jig and then we're just going to do more loops underneath it to secure the chenille. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to do the same step I did earlier and take my scissors and cut the chenille, the tag end, as close to the bottom of the jig as I can get it without damaging the jig itself. 
As you can see, I left a little bit behind right there, but that can just be tied into the jig and any other extra fluffy bits can come out uh, on their own pretty easily, just like that right there. See, I can just pull them right out. The final step is just to whip finish this jig. I'll have a video on that in the future as well. But once you have the jig whip finished, you just take your scissors, cut that thread on the tag end, and there you have it. There's the frosty grape crappie jig and remember to stick around because I'll have some underwater footage up in just a second but I just wanted to give you guys a close-up look at the jig and what it should look like as its finished product and here it is underwater I've slowed it down to half speed and look how much that feathers moving now back to normal speed just look at how much movement this jig has I also think this jig will stand out in all different types of water clarity. Of course, my fish tank is clear, but I think this jig will also be very visible in muddy water. So if you've stuck around until now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you are new, make sure to subscribe and share this video with a friend who you think might like this jig. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Hand Tied Jigs.